The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. I am back again with Mazix agronomist Greg Stewart. Greg, how's it going? Good, Bernard. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. We are down west of London today. We're going to talk to Jeff Cook about his corn planter. Greg, why is Jeff on The Sharp Edge? Yeah, so Jeff farms with his family down here south and west of London. Mapleview Farms, nice operation. Got real concerns about compaction. Have been doing quite a few things over the years to address compaction. You know, the classic What's our axle load? Let's get the right tires underneath that axle load. Let's get the inflation pressure, uh, you know, as low as possible. But then at some point in time, you look at your corn planter and you say, wow, where are we going to fit more tire underneath that? And so Jeff and his family made the decision, can't be tires, got to be tracks. Let's talk to Jeff Cook. Hey Jeff, we're here to talk to you today about tracks on your corn planter, but let's back it up a little bit in terms of a time frame. What other stuff, what other concerns have you had about compaction? What other things have you done about compaction before we get into the tracks on the planter? Yeah, sure, Greg. So I guess when we talk about compaction, it's all about, uh, you know, we're never going to eliminate it, right? So it's all about managing or minimizing you know, what we're doing out there in the field. As long as we're out there, we're going to be causing at least a little bit of compaction. Right. So, you know, we've, compaction's evident when you can see it in, in your crops and, and of course throughout the growing season, whether it's uh, caused by the tillage tractors and implements or obviously in this case, uh, planting equipment. So, you know, we see that in stunted plants. And um, so we made a number of different uh, changes to any of the our larger tractors or, or tillage tractors um, in terms of the tires that we have on them. So any of the newer tractors have the uh, increased flexion or very high flexion tires on them now. And we found that that made a fair difference um, compared to some of the older technology. Um, some of the other things, uh, whether it's you know reducing tillage or getting away from moldboard plowing, that's kind of helped things a little bit as well. Um, but you know, it's always kind of, uh, sure. we're always learning, that's yeah, for yeah. sure. So in a, in a tractor setting, it was relatively easy for you to consider, okay, what's our load? What's the specs on the tire? Let's get the inflation pressure as low as possible. Some of those basic ideas. Uh, and, and, and so you've moved through radials and, and now radials with more flex in the sidewall. Where are you at, if, if you don't mind me asking, in terms of uh, pounds per square inch? What's your inflation pressure on your, say, on your tillage tractors now? Yeah, sure. So a lot of the, you know, the very high flexion tires were down even under 10 in some cases. Right. But I think that 15 PSI is kind of like that threshold that we want to stay under. So any of our tillage equipment, they're all below that, at least the tractors are. Right, um, and then now we're adding some VF tires onto even the tillage implements themselves too. Uh, so yeah. that's cool. helping as well. Yeah. So it gets more complicated though, Jeff, when you start looking at a corn planter and the space and the tire options and and what could you do. So so what led you to be concerned about sort of pinch row compaction and uh, and did you think about other possibilities before you went right to the track option? Sure. So I guess. Um, you know, we saw some pinch row compaction. Um, we had a new planter similar to this one in 2012 um, with the uh, Lari uh, fertilizer tank, dry fertilizer tank. And uh, obviously that's maybe uh, 11, 12,000 pounds um, that tank is, and it's all on those center four tires, right? Right. And so, you know, we saw quite a bit of compaction, especially when that tank was full. Um, you call it pinch row compaction. So you've got your two true pinch rows between each set of tires at the time. And then you've got the rows each side of that as well. So th there's another four rows that are affected. And, um, you know, it was evident early in the growing season. And then we followed that through until later in the growing season and found that, you know, kernel numbers were reduced in those pinch rows. Um, and, and there was a lot more tip back and inconsistencies, uh, you know, plant to plant sure so obviously that's so how many bushels effect. were you given up do you feel in those pinch rows or or in the section behind the yeah the planter frame itself so we took uh a lot of those uh observations to yield we did uh 12 rows right in the very center of the the planter 
and then we did the um, you know six rows on one wing and then six rows in the next swath over right. and measured those differences and we found around 10 bushels you know over a large amount of trials yeah yeah and uh yeah so it's significant yeah and we kind of found the need to do something that's for sure and the something you went essentially straight from looking at what your what your standard tire was on the corn planter to go into tracks yeah so at the time that seemed like the best option um that was uh 2016 the spring of 2016 we added tracks to the planter for the first time and for the most part um, there are instances where we still do see a little bit of compaction in those those uh, center rows, but for the most part, we've done a number of studies, and that ten bushels is almost all gone, gone. away. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, yeah. just a couple of details then about the about the tracks themselves on a corn planter. How your your tracks are about twelve inches wide then yeah. on that on that Susie design. Yeah, that's right. They're about twelve inches wide, and that's as wide as they can go. There's not a lot of room there between right. row units. Yeah. It's, it's as compact as you And what about speed uh, traveling down the road? Uh, I hear, you know, some restrictions on tracks. Where yeah. are you at on speed? Yeah, so that's the one thing. We, uh, we're kind of maxed out around 20 mile per hour when, you know, the tractors these days go 26 or so. So a little bit of, you know, limited transportation speed, but uh, not, you know, a, not, it's not a, a yeah, deal breaker, that's yeah, for yeah, sure. Right on. And then what about headlands? Sometimes you hear tracks, uh, concerns about tracks on the headlands that they throw a bit of dirt or make it a little bit rougher. Are you concerned about uh, the headlands being a bit rougher when you have tracks versus tires? Yeah, no, I think um, if anything, they're probably a little smoother than, you know, the tired, uh, when we had the tires on the planter with all that weight on the, uh, yeah, yeah. On, on the tires. Um, no, it, no, 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 no berming no, or no, no berming. Big problems. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So I could argue then, uh, Jeff, that you've got uh, you know a fair bit of weight up there on that center fill dry fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say, well, why don't you just get rid of that tank and get rid of dry fertilizer, and therefore you wouldn't need, have the uh, the pinch row problems. What's your what's your logic behind? No, we've we, we've got to have the weight on that bar to run dry fertilizer. Hence the tracks. Where are you at on dry fertilizer? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, a big believer in a two by two dry fertilizer. We we do have another planter that we use kind of sparingly, um, planting corn with a liquid system on it, and we're very very careful, you know, which farms we we use that planter on, just because if we get into a low testing environment, I I think we're giving up 10, 15, even 20 bushels oh, an wow. acre versus the dry uh, yeah, two yeah. by two. So, so that's a lot a, of dollars and that's, cents that's a, there. That's a slam dunk there. Sure. Then. Yeah, 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 definitely. So uh, along those same lines, I see that in your planter, you didn't go center fill on the seed. Uh, you went individual hoppers. Uh, what's, what, was the, what was the thinking process there? Yeah, so that's all part of the compaction uh, concerns, I guess, is, you know, with the center fill hopper, we're adding another, uh, you know, several thousand pounds to that uh, center. Right portion of the planter and all that you know translates to to pressure on the ground right so you know if we can spread that over the width of a you know, 60 foot planter that certainly helps i think so from a compaction perspective you're you're willing to go to individual hoppers to to reduce the the pinch row threat yeah absolutely uh, but yeah. not willing to give up on dry fertilizer <laughs> bec because of the advantages of the two by two yeah definitely in a center yeah, fill design sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Good, good. Hey, no, that's uh, that's good stuff. What, where do you go for motivation or information, or 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 how did you get the tracks put on? Just a little bit of the the technical guts on on how you how you bought the tracks and were they worth it? What's the payback period? Did you put them on yourself? Just yeah. a, just a little bit of a touch on sure. that. Sure. So there's, I mean, anymore. There's obviously a lot of information out there on the internet, but I find more than anything, it's just talking to. To other growers and whether that's at a farm show in the states or you know our local uh, soil and crop sure. uh, memberships and, and so on and um, yeah there's a ton of resources out there so we uh, we got the tracks from our local um, dealership equipment dealership uh, they knew that we had concerns uh, with the compaction and they kind of came to us when the tracks came out and that's uh, that's when we uh, put them on. We installed them ourselves, um, and really, they were. It was very simple. It's just a matter of taking uh, a couple pins out of each uh, each track system, and really, it took two of us uh, two hours. Oh, really? Two three hours yeah. at the most. Cool. Yeah, pretty simple. So we did have a soil and crop day uh, where the they actually had the pressure sensors in the ground, and you took your unit down there. 
uh, do, you, do you recall feeling sort of justified that when the re results came back from that day that you're in fact your pressure at say the six inch level was significantly lower than comparable planters run in tires? Yeah, I mean that, uh, that those experiments made me feel pretty good about what we were doing for yeah. sure. I forget the actual figures, but I'm sure uh, yeah. you'd be able to dig them up somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. Hey, Jeff, been awesome talking to you. Thanks for your time today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Greg. It's, it's been a pleasure. Super. So there you have it. Another great story on the sharp edge. Greg, interesting here. We've got yield, we've got fertility, and some serious payback on compaction. Yeah. Growers like Jeff have an, a long list of possibilities that they can look to to improve their, their corn planters, right? We've got down pressure and singulation and closing wheels and floating trash whippers. But when I hear Jeff's story about real payback, closing a 10 bushel yield gap, right? in those pinch rows by going to tracks and allowing him to bring dry fertilizer in a two by two band. Well, to me, that gets pretty exciting. And some of those options maybe ratchet their way up the priority list in terms of what you might invest in in a planter today. Awesome. Hey, another great show on the Sharp Edge. We will see you next time.